I'm your host, Jose Quintero. Y el día de hoy, I'm just so excited, ecstatic. I don't think I've ever had a sit-down conversation with this chingona ever. So I'm excited just to get to know her, her backstory, and then obviously get into these uncomfortable conversations. And without further ado, let me introduce Fernanda Kelly, una... Una mujer, o sea, como diría Jenny Rivera, Jenny Rivera, con unos ovarios, pero de San Diego. So, you know, chingona, entrepreneur, CEO, radio host, TV host, activist, and human being. Con ustedes, Fernanda Kelly. Ay, the solo. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be in this podcast. My gosh. I know. I can only imagine what we're going to talk about this podcast. Mm. But I do want to go ahead and say that um, Fernanda, you have a huge track history in terms of the work that you've done and how inspirational you've been for so many Latinas in terms of trying to get into the media world, but also being in entrepreneurs and at the end of the day, following their dreams. So I want to go ahead and start with your childhood, how you were raised, porque me imagino que como te criaron is literally the embodiment and you've been pushing through it, con esas mismas enseñanzas, that foundation, how was it set? Como mm. Fernandita de chiquita. Yeah. Well, to start off, me llama, me, they still call me tamalito. ¿En serio? Yeah, mi papá, <laughs> nací gordita y, y cachetona, y mi papá siempre me dice, like, tamalito. So, um, with that kind of love, you know, it's like those nicknames, that kind of care, ese cariño que te dan los papás latinos. Eh, crecí en una familia de mucho amor. Vengo de padres mexicanos, sinaloenses, los dos de Mazatlán. And we grew up in Tijuana, even though I was born in San Diego. And it was just the most, I think it was the most beautiful stage in my life, if I look back. And I'm going to cry. Ah. <laughs> because it was perfect. I mean, I had a mom, I had a dad, I had a house, I had my dog, I had a parrot, <laughs> I had mm -hmm. a sister, then my brother was born. We had, you know, before the recession, because there was a point in my life where everything changed. But yeah. um, my childhood, as a, like as a child, era hermoso, fue hermoso, de mucho amor. A los cuantos años, at what age, like, were you living in Tijuana? Until what age? Yeah, so I was there till I was eight, and okay. then we moved to San Diego. Um, it was just a choice my parents made without really knowing the quality of life, what's going to be better, or, you know, like politics, nothing. It was just a choice my parents made because we were, we were border kids. So it's like we were a border family. So it was normal to us, the ir y venir de San Diego a Tijuana, like for everything. You want McDonald's, cruzar la fila at San Diego. You wanted to go to Price Club, which now is Costco, then you would just cruzar la línea. And then my dad was like, I just want these kids to have a better life. And so we moved uh, when I was eight, not knowing English, nothing. Yeah. How was that transition when you tuviste que mudar de Tijuana a San Diego, a whole new school? Because I'm assuming that's intimidating. And you know, there's the whole, because I lived in Mexico and I got a little bit of the bullying. Que cuando llegas aquí, dices, oye, pues, pues tú no eres de aquí. You're not from here. Ni de aquí, ni de allá. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny because you don't learn that until you're there. Mm -hmm. Like when we moved, you know, I was eight. ¿Qué, qué puedes pensar de la vida? The life is perfect. At least that was my story, you know? And so, um, but then I learned really quick that, that I was different, that I didn't know the language, that I was very Mexican. You know, I was just used to being a niña de la casa, you know, kids are here in, in the U.S. I feel like are more independent. Um, and, and as Latinos, Mexicanos, at least, um, we are very homebodies. We are very like, you know, lo que tu papá diga, lo que tu mamá diga. And so I learned that quickly that I was not rebellious, that I didn't speak the language and, and people made fun of me. Um, I had to take like tutors and, and lessons and it was a whole experience. Yeah, no, I can only imagine. Where does this love for media or entertainment come porque siento that everybody who's in entertainment and is first generation to do so as i assume that you are is mm -hmm. tienen una historia yeah well i remember when i was eight years old actually when we just moved to it started way before i just don't remember but when i remember was sitting in my parents um kitchen or we were in the kitchen and i was doing my homework and i would listen to rocio durcal 
Um, and I would just imagine myself being on stage, like dancing and singing like her. And I was like, I want to, I want to do that. When I grow up, I want to be a singer. I want to be a performer. And I remember I told my dad and my dad was like, you can be whatever you want, but first you got to go to school. Mm -hmm. And so, but ever since I was very little, I mean, five years old, four, I have pictures where I would dress up with my mom's heels and just pretend and <laughs> siempre, siempre pretending to be someone else. Yeah. So while you were growing up and pretending, obviamente, yendo a la escuela para superarte, where was that turning point donde tú dices, I'm going to chase that dream and I'm going to try to see it make it happen? And did you face so many no's, like they say? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's been, it's still hard right now. Yeah. It's still hard today. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I started seeking as soon as I told my dad that, I mean, I, I, I never realized it until later on, but like I would do auditions for plays at school. Um, I wouldn't get it. I remember one time I auditioned for Mary Poppins and I got one of the chimney cleaners. Oh, no. <laughs> and so that was like my first little role. I was like, wait a minute, I want to be her and I'm cleaning the fucking chimney, you know, it's yeah. like, yeah. So um, I started seeking very, very young and then I started modeling and I started doing fashion shows in Tijuana. Of course, I'm not tall enough, but, you know, in Tijuana I was. Um, and then I would do beauty pageants and I traveled and it's like always until I decided to do it for real when I moved to L.A. when I was 20. And I had decided wow. before, pero mi papá me decía, estudia, estudia, estudia. And so, I, you know, because I was very... Lo que diga tu papá, lo que diga tu mamá, you know, my values were, are so solid que, que no quería como defraudarlos, pero mm -hmm. llegó un momento donde I, I, I couldn't do it and I just moved out here. Yeah, yeah. Y obviamente you have that uh, like anxiety to, to be como que un, I, I don't know how to say it, but like una decepción para tus familiares because yeah. they came from Mexico to start a new life para que tú te puedas superar. And at the end of the day, you're out here trying to chase a dream that none of your family members have ever done. That's the scary part. Okay, you don't even know. If is, is this what I'm dreaming? Does it exist out there? Is it possible? Like For Somebody like me, right? Yeah, like how? how where do you begin? And, and, and I don't, I mean, I, I remember I was going to the university, San Diego State, studying journalism, and I had a minor in, in theater. And my teacher was like, if you really want to do this, you got to go to LA or New York. Wow. And I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. And I did it. Pero sin saber ni conocer a nadie. Yeah. Pero did you end up transferring to another school? Or tú nomás dijiste, me voy a salir de la universidad? No, I dropped out. I started, I started, um, I studied journalism and I was miserable. I was miserable. Wow. Like I just couldn't in my minor in theater. So I would just live in the theater. And then, you know, I just like started looking for schools here in LA and New York, I got accepted at NYU for the theater program. Mi papá me dijo, no te vayas tan lejos. So I didn't go. And so I looked here in LA for the best acting school. Y me salió Stella Adler, que es donde oh, fue. Goodness. Yeah, Benicio del Toro, Salma Hayek, you know, you name it. The greatest people have gone there. Y dije, okay, so that's where I'm going to go. No money. I didn't have money because it's a super expensive private school. Pero I want to te confieso. <laughs> ah, pues mira, it's worth it. I mean, it's classical. It's classical yeah. theater. It's not, you know, act. It's not like um, modern at all. Yeah. But you learn how to act. Like you learn how to develop a character. You, they have the best teachers. Anyway, so I was like, okay, ¿cuánto cuesta? And what do I have to do to get in? And so I went, I drove here to LA one day and I spoke to the owner and I was like, I have no money, but I know how to work. So what can I do so that I can come to school and work for you? And that's what I did. I went to school Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and I went to school from eight in the morning to like 5 p.m. And then I worked a couple of hours answering their phones, whatever they needed from me. And so that's how I was able to stay for the first months. And then I was able to get a job. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Like, that hustle a los 20 años para perseguir yeah. un sueño y no saber si se te va a cumplir o no. Yeah, and I would just drive here porque no tenía casa, yo no tenía, conocía a nadie en Los yeah. Ángeles, entonces manejaba lunes, miércoles y viernes acá, and I would work at the bank in San Diego, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Wow, that's some dedication, and I applaud you for that, porque no sé si dos horas ni en LA traffic, y, oh, no. y venía los viernes, entonces me imagino when you were off on Fridays, you were like, 
Yeah, I mean, I would have to stay till like 9 p.m. to work. Yeah. So by the time I got back, there was no traffic. And then like around three months, I met, you know, I met people along the way, friends that also are still my best friends right now. Y ellos me ofrecieron su casa. So then I eventually moved out here and I lived on their sofa for months. Wow. What was a pivotal moment in your career that you would say like, sabes que, this is my first job that I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be? Mm, what I'm supposed to be is a good question. Um, I don't know because I did everything I wasn't supposed to be doing. I did everything wow. that I didn't want to be doing, which was hacer? hosting. You didn't want to host TV? No, I did not. What? Y lo hacías tan bien. <laughs> I know, that's very racist. <laughs> that is so funny. We'll go yeah. into, it, was that your first, like, breakthrough project? Yeah, that's how I began to get noticed. Um, yeah. yeah, so I remember, like, I would do commercials for money. I would, hasta de can, me metía ya con los abares, vestía de tecate. You know, I was young, yeah, I had yeah, the yeah. body. I never did anything against my will, pero si andaba de ahí, ¿sabes? Tratando de conseguir 20 bucks, 60 bucks, 100 bucks. Este, and then eventually I did go to a movie audition for, you know, for a role. And the producers there, there was a studio next door and the producer saw me and he's like, do you speak Spanglish? Do you want to host a TV show? And I was like, Spanglish? No. Oh my God, que naco. <laughs> Like, who speaks Spanglish? Todo el mundo. Yo oh, no. Dude. Yo ahorita, ¿cómo andamos? Ve, ¿cómo andamos? And so he's like, well, if you want the job, like, he just saw me. He's like, if you want the job, I'll teach you in two weeks how to speak Spanglish, and the, your, the show is yours. And that was for Mundos. And ah, mira. Yeah, Mundos before it was from Telemundo. Mundos used to be independent. Mm -hmm. And so they gave me a, it was a worldwide show. You could see it in wow. Europe. You can see it in Mexico. You can see it in South America. It was huge. And I didn't even know. It. And I just was just like, had my own show. <laughs> and I started speaking Spanglish. <laughs> no manches. Y como fue esa experiencia? I'm sure you learned a lot. Yeah. I learned so much. It was so much fun. I was there for like about a year. Me pagaban super bien. Digo, por aquel entonces. I remember I would get like $178 a day, which to me was huge. Of course. Okay. Porque yo no tenía dinero y nunca me habían pagado así como por un trabajo. I was able to go to school. Like, I would, you know, it was just like the perfect job for me. But it was a job. To me, it was just like, okay, I'm going to go to work. And then I'm going to do what I love, which is acting. And then they bought out the, the station, Telemundo bought it. And so, I, you know, I took a break. And, and then I would act and do plays and commercials and shorts and everything that I love. But I wasn't paying enough. Of course. Of course. So, LA is expensive. Yeah, super expensive. Yeah. yeah. A ver, cuando, when you step foot for the very first time on set after your two weeks of training, was there any type of nerves? Did, along the way, did you have any imposter syndrome? Because it's, it's a huge thing. Que te sientes y tú dices, wait, no me siento que estoy muy preparada, pero tengo cámaras, ojos, y pues aquí estamos. Like, no nos rajamos. That's so funny you say that. I love it. Porque, no. I have never felt that for hosting. Okay. You know why? Because I don't give a shit. Ah! <laughs> Qué bueno. It, it sounds yeah. like mamona, but I really do not give a shit for hosting. For me, hosting is something that I do for fun. It's mm. something that I can just be myself. I don't try to impress. I don't try to sound proper. I don't try to look good. I don't try to know. I don't try. I just do me because I don't care. It's just for me, hosting is a, is a space in a, in a platform where people should be themselves. Yeah. I don't believe in a, you know, una host cuadrada. And, mm. but let me tell you where I do have imposter syndrome. Every single time I'm on a movie set mm. or on a show set, like, Ahí me estoy muriendo del miedo because, because I care, because it's wow. so deep in my, in my soul, in my heart. I just never think I'm good enough. That's so that I do know what that feels like, but not for hosting. 
But I think that's a beautiful way to put it porque mucha gente that want to aspire to be TV hosts, they think of TV hosts very news anchor, but they want to conduce shows like the one you did, Lanzate o El Gordo y la Flaca, where they have to be more three-dimensional and just be themselves. And sometimes para deshacerse de ese 2D, it's really hard porque sientes que no lo estás haciendo bien cuando at the end of the day, you should just have fun and not give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like everybody has their style. Mm-hmm. But for me, again, it's the way it's it's my platform to just play because I work so hard all the time that the least I can do is when I'm working is to have fun. And so I try to make it fun by just not even trying to think. I mean, I prepare myself. I'm very 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 um ¿cómo se dice? No perfeccionista, sino que me gusta estar preparada. Exacto. I do my homework. I do my due diligence. I do my homework. Nunca me vas a ver desprevenida. Like if I'm going to interview someone, I know my stuff. You know, I all, I'm always ready. Yeah. And that takes preparation. Pero at the end of the day, when you say action, it's como, okay, you're you, I'm me, vamos a dar. Sí, sí, sí. Y se notó que lo hacías perfecto en Lánzate porque duró cinco años, five years during that show. It started off as an L.A. show, then it got syndicated nationwide, and it allowed you the opportunity, pues, básicamente a conocer el mundo. Yeah. How was that experience? Amazing. Amazing, porque no solamente with Lánzate I was able to travel, like, you know, the world, but I was also able to create, like, a solid foundation for my life. Mm-hmm. You know, because of, of, of everything that I was doing and, and all the opportunities that came up with it. And so I was able to travel even further, you know, as myself, for myself mm-hmm. and with my family. I was able to do things that I only dreamed of. And so, yo para con Univision and, 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 you know, with Lanzate and everybody that gave me the opportunity to be there, I'm forever grateful porque sí me cambió la vida. Yeah. It was, hay un antes y un después de Fernanda de Lanzate. Yeah, and it was almost almost seven years. Entonces sí fue uh-huh. bastante. Fueron cuatro años locales and then almost three years national. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. No, qué bonito. Entonces termina, lánzate. Was it inesperado? Ya lo veían venir? Was it something that you guys decided? No, no. I was actually packing in my house uh, for the next week. You know, we were going to uh-huh. travel to Campeche. We were going to cover Campeche. And my boss, I remember the old, he calls me, he's oh, like, you got, yeah, you know, me say, you got to come to the station right now. And I was like, no, dude, I'm busy. I'm packing. We're talking about no. And I hadn't showered. He's like, you got to come right now. I was like, dude, no. He's like, I'm not asking you. You got to come right now. And I was like, I just did away. So I, you know, drove. I remember I was wearing all black with a hat, whatever, sin bañarme. And then I always because I'm Fernanda, I would always like be ready with my notes. Again, uh-huh. I'm always preparing, right? So, so we call me libretita and we're all sitting there and then Dio just drops the bomb. My boss, he's like, the show's canceled <gasps> today. Nobody has a job. Fernanda, you got to go to HR. You got to sign your stuff. And, and, and we were just like, wow. <laughs> es, ese mismo día saliste de la compañía. Yeah. He said it like literally was a conversation of like three minutes. You ripped that band-aid real quick. Yeah, really quick. And, you know, at the end, we, we found out why everything happened so quickly. But to be honest, yo ya, I'm Buddhist. I don't yeah. know if you know. Okay, so I've been, I've been chanting for 17 years, right, as a Buddhist. And I had already been chanting, praying for one year that I wanted to get out of Lanzate. I was, I was really missing acting. I was really mm-hmm. sad, depressed inside. And so I was ready to go. But then again, it was my baby. So I was never going to quit. You know, I love my family there. So it, it was just like, ah, uh, but it, it was an answer to my prayer. So when he said that, my eyes were just like, like, finally, this is over. Even though I loved the show and I loved the people, my, you know, my followers and I loved everybody there, but I needed to do me. Yeah, that's what you I was going to say. Es, esa oportunidad, like, led to another opportunity. Entonces, cuéntame, te sales de la compañía, obviamente, toda, like, choqueada. Y dices, okay, what's next? Pero ya tenías esto, like, a prayer that came to fruition. Mm-hmm. And you're like, let me start este, este producto para chingonas. 
Well, yeah, no, actually, no. I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, 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 all I knew was I didn't want to work in TV anymore. I knew I was done. Yeah, like done. And so, you know, when, when they said that, I was still with Univision for like another three months, just with contracts. Mm -hmm. y so, so I had time to digest it. And then, you know, I decided to not come back anywhere um, or not go anywhere because they did offer me to go to the Script America. You know, things were sí, offered, sí, sí. but I was ready to just take a break. And one day sitting here in my house, I was like, I, and it was about a year after or six months or so of, of leaving Lanza then that I was like, I really want to still have that connection with my followers and with the women, specifically the women. Like I'm really attached to women. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I still want to have that dynamic where I, where I can express myself and people will listen and, and, and I'll have that feedback. So I was like, what can I do? And I don't know why, Jose, I don't know why a clothing line came into my head because I don't come from business. I don't know business. <laughs> I'm just like, mm -hmm. pero se me ocurrió hacer algo. And so I first started Shopper Closet KM, which was the beginning of Nitak. And then I rebranded when the Conovallos t-shirt was born. And I was like, okay, I found my niche. I found who I am as a, as a business owner and what I want to say. And that's when I rebranded to Nitak. I remember when I first saw the Conovario shirt, I was like, wow, this is genius. It's so simple. Dos palabritas, but that mean so much, so much. And I'm pretty sure it impacted and it motivated so many um, women, which led to not your typical average queen. Nita. Mm -hmm. Nita, yes. ¿Ya cuántos yes. años llevas con? Voy a cumplir tres años wow. en agosto. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. So we're still babies. Yeah, still yeah. Mm-hmm. ¿Qué has aprendido? Oh my gosh, todo, todo. It's so much. I mean, having a small business is, it humbles you for sure. Mm. It humbles you porque tienes que empezar de cero. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. At least that's my path. Porque I don't know. How, I'm really bad with using where I'm at or like my, mm. you know, career power, if you want to call it. I, I'm really bad at using that for my benefit. I hate, you know, dealing with, media and people and all that it's like no way like I'm out del estudio and yo no quiero saber de nadie I want to go have a drink with my friends you know you hear me so it's <laughs> like yo no sabía so anyway so it's just I just decided to start from zero like google it you know like and, and, and trying to hold on to friends that knew what they were doing entonces it humbles me it, it I learned so much I, I and, and it's a different market yeah. it's otro rollo it's otro rollo Sí, sí, porque me acuerdo que tú te salías y a las calles a vender tus playeras, you posted con tu mesita y todo, y así te diste a conocer con este brand, Nitak, which if you're listening, definitely go follow on Instagram, yeah. arroba Nitak, N-Y-T-A-Q. Yes. And you're dropping that promotion right yeah. there. <laughs> Pero no, sabes no. que, right now you mentioned three years. Two of those years have been in uh, pandemic mode. And as soon as the pandemic started, it was so interesting how many businesses shifted from like yours, from a clothing line to pandemic mode clothing line. Yeah. And I'd have to say that you're one of the few businesses that went above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, ¿qué es lo que hiciste con este gran proyecto que me encantó? Oh, thank you for the medical gown project. So what happened was with, um, I was checking my Instagram in the middle of the pandemic. Again, my prayer was that I wanted to help. You know, I, I needed to be of service durante esta pandemia. I didn't just want to sit around and sell t-shirts. And so my prayer was, I need to help. How can I help? And one of my followers that, you know, goes to my theaters and like my shows and she just like, said, I have a friend who's a doctor that needs help. She doesn't have PPE gear. There, you know, the world was shut down. She couldn't get it. Everything was sold out. She's like, can you make them for her? And I was like, yes. And then I had to Google, like, what is PPE gear? Like, I had no idea, but I knew she was an answer to my prayer because I was like, esto me llegó. Yo no lo busqué, me llegó. And so I was like, I need to do something with it. So I called my friends, aquí en la industria de, la, de, las, de los textiles, amigos míos, like, dear heart to me. Entonces, me puedes ayudar, ¿cómo se hace un patrón? ¿Cómo se hace esto? But we had to move so quick, porque, yeah. porque todo estaba cerrado, no había nada. 
And then the, anyway, we ended up making medical gowns for doctors. First, it was just for her. And then she told her doctor friends. And so we started making gowns for all these doctors in, South, in, in Southern California. And then one day, again, after praying, I was like, I need to make this bigger. I need to donate these gowns. Porque esta gente me la estaba comprando. Porque tenían dinero, sabes, como hospital. Y yo le pagaba la gente. O sea, everything it, it was a business because we, we had to flow. Pero yo quise donar. Y ahí fue donde nació el The Medical Gown Project. I called people that I know from LA Times. And I was like, I'm doing, I've been doing this for months, almost like eight months on my own. I've helped these many doctors, these many gowns. Is there a story? Can you help me, you know, say that I can help? And yeah. they're like, yes. And then so they came on board. And that's when we really started making magic happen. We donated thousands of medical gowns. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Perfecto, porque la gente donaba, la gente Ajá. donaba, todos ustedes me ayudaron como amigos, donaron, eh, eh, because it was based on donation only. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember, and I thought that was mm -hmm. such a beautiful, because uh, in ese momento, como tú bien dices, a lot of these uh, doctors, nurses, lack the resources, lack the money, and lack the access to, like, oh, we didn't even know PPE gowns existed y todo eso, y que los estabas haciendo tú, y también you created jobs. Yeah. Like, that, that was such a beautiful, when you introduce, like, your, your crew, that, you know what, like, I was able to hire these women, costureras mm -hmm. que desafortunadamente perdieron su trabajo, like, that was such a, wow, Fernanda, like, <laughs> chingona, <laughs> el sombrero. <laughs> Gracias, gracias. You know, I feel like it's with your heart. You know, when you do things with heart. Yo por mí, si por mí fuera José, yo ayudaría a todo el mundo. I love helping. That's why I love being a Buddhist because I, that's, this is what I do for a living. I have my life as a, you know, persona en, lo, en los medios, but then I also have my very personal practice, which I help hundreds of women on a daily basis, like weekly basis, monthly basis to just be happy, to deepen our faith and, and, and our, you know, have courage in ourselves. And it's, so I, I love that connection. Talk to me about uh, being a Buddhist, porque tú dijiste your parents are Catholic mm -hmm. or you grew up Catholic. How was that coming of, of age conversation with your parents? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to transition. And how did Buddhism come into your life? So Buddhism came after touring a one year tour in the United States for a acting project that I had with another girl who was Buddhist, is Buddhist, Lisette. She's also in the media, Lisette Lopez. She's an anchor for Telemundo in San Diego. And uh, she's like my sister now. Anyway, and we were touring and she would talk to me about Namio Horenge Kyo and chanting. I was like, Jack, tagate. like, what is that? I'm Catholic, leave me alone. You know, Diosito, you know, like all this. Until finally, I was like, you know what? Just take me to a meeting so you can shut up and never again talk to me about Buddhism because I'm Catholic. And then she took me to a meeting and I fell in love with the life condition of the people in that place, in that room. Everybody was happy. Everybody was not like, like a fake happy because people were crying, sharing their, their stories and their experiences, but they had this life force that no matter what is happening to them, cancer, you know, divorces, kids on drugs. But at the end of the day, they're like, but I have Namioho Rengekyo, but I have my faith. I have this practice. And I was like, what is this? I need to know. And so they told me, chant 90 days for anything you want. And if it doesn't happen, then you can quit. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to chant. And so I started chanting to book my first union job as an actor. What does chanting mean? Does that just mean repetition, saying it out loud? Yes, it's a mantra, and it says, Namyoho Renge Kyo. It means devotion to the mystic law of cause and effect through sound or teaching, meaning that when you chant this mantra, this sutra, you are committing to the law of cause and effect every time you say it out loud. So if I do something, it has an effect. Therefore, that will come back to me in some way. And it's, you say it over and over. So this is what I do. I sit in front of my Gohonsen, which is a scroll and mandala. And I go like this. For hours. Wow. But that's every time you say it, you're, you, it's like you have a plug and you connect it to the force of the universe and your life just, you have so much power. And the power resides in you. 
Mm -hmm. it's, it's different from Catholicism or Christianity where there's an outside God or person that's going to save you or help you. Aquí todo eres tú. Sí, so sí, you sí. stop blaming your environment. You stop relying on anything. You stop blaming your environment. It's, you know, you are responsible. And so you fix it and you change. That's a beautiful way of seeing yeah. life. Oh. Yeah, so when I told my dad and my mom, they were like, ¿Qué es eso? ¿Y Dios? What's going to happen? ¿Y la iglesia? ¿Y tus Así hijos? Así el infierno. Oh, sí, no. Que eso es una brujería y eso es un culto. Like, they were going crazy. Pero yo ya estaba, you know, I was done. I was, like, already there. I was, you know, doing my thing, living in L.A. Yeah, bye. And then, like, six months later, I remember my dad, I was in a really bad mood that day, and I was on the phone with him. No sé qué, no sé qué, no sé qué. And my dad was like, no has hecho chanting, ¿verdad? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is so much. Yes, yes, yes. And that's kind of like when they're, they, because they noticed that mm -hmm. with chanting, I was able to be calmer and just more serene and just able to, you know. Yeah. ¿Algún día lo has, los has invitado? Oh, sí. Ya, yo salido a juntas, mi papá, mi mamá. They come and visit all the time. They hear me chanting. They, they, uh -huh. it's a whole, it's, it's because it's like you have exercise in your life. I know you're super hardcore exercise. It's part of your daily, it's a part yeah. of your genes. Para mí el budismo también es eso. Yo no paso un día si no hago budismo. Es día y noche, quien esté. Si sí. yo viajo, si yo voy, si yo estoy, if I'm on the set, everybody knows I have to chant or else. I don't function. That, no, I think that's beautiful. And I think that's also amazing that como padres, like Latino parents, they understand and respect this change, even though they may not agree with it, but they know it makes you a better person because at the end of the day, that's what we should be striving for. I've always mm -hmm. said like, cree lo que tú quieras, pero no seas un hijo de la chingada. You yeah. know, like be a great yeah. person, be a good person, be a role model. And porque eso no cuesta nada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Whatever works for you. And I'm so glad that you found it with Buddhism. I'm going to have to try some of these mantras and chants in un futuro. Sí. Luego te invito una junta. They, we have meetings all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think nosotros como Latinos, especially like first generation sons of, of Mexican, o sea, Mexicanos, we should expose ourselves to all these uh, other cultures, all these other religions, you know, just to increase our tolerance for the views of others. You know, porque eso creo que es tan importante que también nos hace mejores personas. You know, traveling makes us better people. So definitely, invítame y yo voy. Yeah, like for me, I, I always say if I wasn't chanting, I would have probably killed somebody already. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, I consider myself like very aggressive. ¿ah? <laughs> like, yo tengo muchos ovarios. O sea, yo soy bien cabrona. Yo soy, yo soy norteña. I'm loud. I'm, I'm, I'm a go-getter, ¿sabes? Entonces, I have no problem telling people to go fuck off. Yo no tengo ningún problema. Pero you can't go around life fighting with people. Even if they hurt you deliberately, you can't for many reasons. Cada quien hace lo que quiera, pero I've learned that I cannot tell you fuck off even though you hurt me. For many, many reasons. So I've learned to understand that when people are mean, aggressive, when they're rude, when they're mean, when they're evil to you, it's because they're suffering. Yeah. There's something that they're carrying that is making them so miserable that they have to mess with your life. It's and it's not my problem. It's theirs. And so I've, had, I've learned to have so much compassion And it has saved me from many, many, many bad experiences, especially in this, in this business. Porque este business, tú sabes, Jose, it's dirty. Yeah. It's evil. It's mean. It's not Real pretty. Quick. And so yeah. if I would have not practiced, I, I probably would have been in jail or something. <laughs> think, no, I agree. Creo que para mí es el gimnasio, like you said it. Este, aunque pase, no pasa un día que no voy, because that's my de-stressor. Ahí saco, grito, golpeo, lo que se me dé la gana, so I don't do it at work. Exacto. Exacto. Yeah. So you, you get it. You yeah. get it. <laughs> A ver, what lesson did you have to learn the hard way? Porque creo que eso es muy interesante, like, especially working in entertainment, we get hit with lessons all the time. 
lessons de, de confianza, lessons de amabilidad, lessons de dos caras de diferente gente, o a lo mejor lessons de amor in life, you know? Mm -hmm. So which one did you have to learn the hard way que hasta que no te pegó, tú dijiste, wow. Well, I think the biggest, there was also a before and after this particular lesson. And I don't think it's the hard way. I just think it had to be this way so that I could wake up to it. Pero I had a, a recurring um, sexual harassment wow. with my bosses. Everywhere I would go, my bosses would try to sexually harass me, would try to all kinds of harassment. And so I just thought that was part of the business. You know, well, this is what men do. This is who they are. I mean, I, I got to be in this world because this is what I like to do. So ni more. But then one day, like, I was like, I don't want to live like this anymore. Estoy cansada de que me estén jodiendo la vida. Estos hombres, like, it's disgusting. I don't want to deal with it. So I started chanting, like, what am I doing to cause this kind of behavior in men? Mm -hmm. Again, Buddhism is about taking responsibility. I'm not saying anything about, I'm not talking about being abused and being your yeah. fault. It's, it's completely my own experience. And I, I want to make that clear because I know it's a very delicate subject. But in my belief, in my, in my, in my Buddhism, in my practice, you always ask yourself, what did I, what, how can I fix this? What, what can I do? What can I learn to be, be a better person? And so I would ask myself for months and I would cry. I would cry like, ¿Qué estoy haciendo? how can I change this karma that I have? And then finally, I realized where, this is where the lesson comes in, that I would behave the same way with bosses, male bosses, as I would behave with my best friend, con mis amigas Jotas, con mi mamá, con mis tías, con mi hermana, just being Fernanda. Yeah. And unfortunately, I couldn't do that. I'm not saying not anybody can, but I couldn't behave that way because it, it led men to think that I was easy, that I was dejada, that I was free spirit, everything that I am, like I am free spirit, I am easygoing, I am una chava buena gente, pero it gave them the wrong idea. So I was like, I'm gonna start poniendo la línea. I'm going to start behaving como una señorita. I'm going to start behaving like, no, tú allá, yo acá. No me hablas así. You know, just really put boundaries. And that change, I've never had a problem with a guy. And that has been, I don't know, man, like 15 years. Wow. Because I learned that with men, and I'm sorry for all the men out there. No worries. This is a good lesson for all of us. You cannot be the same as a woman in this, in this entertainment industry. No puedes tú ser la misma mujer que es en casa con un jefe o con un hombre de la industria. You can't. You're gonna, they're going to think you're leading them on. Tienes que poner tus boundaries. De que aquí, aquí me respetas. Sí. No, and no, so no, when no, you place no. that, that boundary, men won't even try and cross it. They don't dare to. Porque saben que contigo no van a poder. Sí. Sí, no, and I'm glad you mentioned it porque suele suceder mucho en el mundo del entretenimiento. Now, te lo voy a poner a la inversa. How do you deal with or how, because um, sometimes, and I hate to say it, women are the, le ponen límites a otras mujeres. Oh, sí. And that is so unfortunate y me ha tocado verlo in all areas, but I see it a lot in entertainment too. And It, it makes me so mad and saddens me because I always try to see like, oye, como yo puedo ayudar? How can I reflect on being a better man to help women and, and elevate women? Pero después me toca ver estas situaciones y yo digo, how, how do I even say something without it coming the wrong way and being like, why are you mansplaining? Why are you, you know, diciéndome que hacer, you're imposing. And it's sort of like, oh my God, I just want you to be a nice person. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I feel it's tough. Yo creo que another thing that I've learned, a lesson, es como decimos en México, medirle el agua a los camotes. Mm. Unfortunately, not everybody's ready to have your wisdom. Wow. Not everybody's ready to hear the truth. Not everybody's ready to get guidance from someone that has experience, maybe like you or me or somebody else. You know, they're not, they're not ready. 
Yeah. So I feel like as as the older we get and the more we're in this industry, just by seeing someone, I can tell where she's at or where he's at in life. And so I, I, I you know, especially for women, I see que so a veces son envidiosas o a veces son inseguras. And so I try to make them feel like they're safe with me. Yeah. Like first, I want to. I want you to know that you're safe with me. I, I'm. I'm not here to take your job. I don't. I don't care if you want my job. It's normal. Everybody wants the best job out there. There is. So I don't feel threatened by those kind of emotions in women or men. Pero yo siento que siempre. I just try and be the bigger person. No trato de darle consejos a la gente. Que porque al menos de que me los pidan. Porque si es un negocio donde la gente tiene un ego muy grande. Y, y de nuevo, si no están listos, no lo van a tomar como, ay, qué lindo. Lo van a tomar como, ¿de ¿qué, qué, qué me hablas, pendejo? Cállate. And it's sad. Yeah. Pero tampoco, you can't change people's paths. They have to get to that level where, you know, if, si tú me dices algo, mi José, por ejemplo, yo con el show, con mi show now on the, on the radio, Isaac, you know, he's been on the radio for I don't know how many years. 20, 30 años, yo no sé. También uno de mis maestros, entonces no te preocupes. Ok, es mi maestro. I have a lot to learn. Y él no, he doesn't mansplain me, he just guides me and I take it. ¿Por qué? Porque él sabe. Ahora, si hablamos de tele, yo soy la que sé. Entonces, yo le explico. Entonces, ahí es como que... que... Tranquilo. Exacto, cálmate, cabrón. Ah, no, pero es like, you know, it's two professionals that have a level of... We have a career. Pero si tú hablas con una persona que va empezando, you know, unless they reach out. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I think... Yeah, no, it is hard, pero I'm so glad that you're taking it and now like that and you're growing porque ya te escuchamos todas las mañanas. So I, and I think that's a beautiful thing que se te... We listen to each other. We listen to each other. A veces pongo ahí mi euforia. No te siento. Oye, yo salgo y pongo el reggaetón. Los pongo ustedes. Entonces estamos en la misma chingadera, güey. No, but I love it. Porque en cuanto yo me fui de, de Caleb, like Isaac was one of the first people like still supportive and would still, you know, message me. Oye, esto lo hiciste bien. O, Oye, puedes hacer esto. Y incluso hasta la fecha, o sea, cuando comenzó en la mañana, even though we're opposing, I guess you could say companies, and at the end of the day, competencia, I've always believed, like, cuando hay una amistad real y bonita, like, la competencia no existe si estás haciendo lo que amas. It's just, mi, mis amigos están en otra compañía y yo estoy en esta. Yeah. En cuanto apagamos el micrófono, we're still cool. Yeah, and así es. Yeah, y a veces la gente se inventa como que, ay, no se habla, no se quiere, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and I think companies do that more than, mm -hmm. than we as talent or as people on, you know, personalities. I have friends in Telemundo, I have friends in Cali, I have friends in Mega, I have friends, I mean, I'm friends with all the hosts from all the, your, your station, o sea, yo con, con todas las mujeres de tu canal soy amiga, I mean, you know, Angelica la, la miro mucho, no es mi amiga, pero a todas las demás chicas con las que tú trabajas es TikToks, it's like, mm -hmm. Y también comparto con Sandra Peña, o sea, it's like, I'm friends con todo el mundo. Sí, and it's because this industry is so small that you meet everybody at different places in your career, in your life, y no porque estés en los mismos horarios vas a decir, ay, ya no te puedo hablar. Exacto. Yeah, so y aparte, I, como dices tú, tú estás aquí un día, mañana estás allá. Entonces, exacto. todos Nunca trabajamos sabes. para la gente. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. A ver, una de las cositas que yo empecé a hacer este año es uh, journaling. And it's self-reflection. You know, I have these cards porque pues a veces I don't like journaling and writing down what's on my mind. I haven't gotten to that point. So I need a prompter. Entonces, I'm going to pull out a random card. Oh, I love this. And I'm going to ask you a question as a self-reflection. Okay. Me la contestas. A ver. In what ways do you want to be like the people that raised you? What's important for you to avoid repeating? I love that. Wow. Para que digas, yeah, you know, no me lo inventé. <laughs> Exacto. In what ways, like my mom and my dad raised me, right? And I, yeah. I do want a family. A rato así si the streets raised me. <laughs> ah, they did kind of también. Ah. Yeah. No, but like I, I think that I, I want to, you know, heredar su, su amor a la familia. Mm -hmm. Like I want, I do want a family. I do want to get married, have kids or adopt. No sé. Cualquier tipo de familia. I don't, I don't believe in like the perfect home. Like, yeah. 
you know, dictated by society, but see como que have, a, have something that's mine, you know, that's like my family, my home, have a home. Que lo que mis papás hicieron, they, they build a home, not a house, mm -hmm. it was a family. Y no me gustaría repetir, I mean, who has, a, you know, como decimos, nadie llegó con manual a esta mm -hmm. vida. Entonces, yo creo que mis papás han sido as perfect as they can be. So, I, I mean, I, it would be judging if yeah. I, you know. Of course, and no family is perfect. Y obviamente, yeah. tú dices, esto hicieron mis papás, but I'm not going to love them any less. Y uno como yeah. humano, we're going to make the same mistakes when we have kids. Well, not the same mistakes, but different mistakes. Exacto. Ex Exacto. Entonces, puede we'll, estar we'll, igual de jodida o igual de chingona, lo mismo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something I wouldn't do, I wouldn't baptize my kids. There you go. Okay. I stop. I don't, want to, I don't want to baptize my kids. I don't believe in the church. I don't believe in God. I don't, I, you know, I completely stop having that life. Entonces, that's something I wouldn't do. <laughs> yeah, because it should be a choice. Yeah. Or when somebody is an adult, I agree with that. I do think, like, I grew up Catholic. Do I still consider myself Catholic? Yeah, but I feel like I've gone more to the Christianity aspect. Porque digo, tengo más una relación con un ser supremo que para mm -hmm. mí es Dios, mm -hmm. then to go and sit in mass, confess myself to another human being who's also a sinner, mm -hmm. y todo eso, like, why do I have to go to somebody when I can just go to direct? Exacto. VIP yeah. sí, status. Sí. Ah. Sí. Sí. O sea, yo ya, yo y el compa ya somos súper... Ah, el compa o sea, Chuy. El compa <laughs> Chuy, sí, exacto. Oh, <laughs> Ay, yo, yo. Oye, one thing that I also want to do with the podcast starting this season is really allowing uh, the people who are on the show to also highlight other people who are doing amazing work, but probably aren't being highlighted enough. Mm. So if you have two or three people in mind that you're like, Sabes que people, you need to go and check out, like everybody listening, this person, porque está haciendo esto, this, porque está haciendo esto. Ahora es el momento. <laughs> you know, you probably know one person that sí se me vino a la mente, Natalie Valenzuela. Oh, yes. Sí, sí, sí. So she's doing amazing things as a mommy mm. and her moms. Yo creo que she has like a, a healing path too. Um, she has her soul fit um, program and she, as a mommy, new mommy, she's a hustler, she's a mom, she's a wife. And so yo creo que she's doing great things. Maybe that's somebody that you want to check out. Yeah. Um, y también Naive Reynoso is a dear friend of mine. Do you know her, Naive? Oh. She's a writer. Okay, so she's a writer. Uh, she does children's book, bilingual children's book, and she's awesome. And she's one of my, I mean, I don't want to call her a mentor because she's young, you know, pero, pero she has taught me so much. And she's like my, the person I go to when we talk business, because yeah. it's like two women that are trying to move forward in this chaotic time mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's a hustler entonces naive natalie yeah i mean i think that's a good start oh no and i think that's a beautiful so definitely if you're listening to this podcast and you also want to be inspired by other women and check out their their instagrams and i'll link them in the bottom para mm -hmm. que la gente también lo pueda ver pero para finalizar fernanda what projects are you working on? Because you gave us some teases about a show that I I, I, I see every week. So, and actually, my episode, my episode no ha salido. I just checked that out today, and it's not it's not out yet. So I was like, oh okay. no wonder it's not out yet. Like, um, so I did a show. I did an episode for Bel Air, wow, the new series of Will Smith. Yeah, well, he's ex executive producing. He's not starring uh -huh. in it. Um, it's on Peacock. Yes, I see. Um, yeah, okay. So I have an episode there. I am also working on a TV show that I wrote um, and created based on my life. And we are on the final stages of editing it, like in terms of script. We're going to pitch it to HBO, Hulu, Amazon, you know, all the good stuff. Um, and it's my life put in in Hollywood, yo, I would be the lead and, you know, acted and everything. So that's that. My clothing line, you know, I have big goals. We're, we're working really hard. Nitak is, you haven't seen anything yet. I feel like, you know, wow. I'm taking my time. I don't, I don't have, no estoy de prisa, no tengo prisa. I'm not running a race. I'm take, just really enjoying every process of it. 
-hmm. Y luego, pues, the radio show. I think Levántate is something that I just started. We turned five months apenas, learning from all you guys, you know, <laughs> de ti, de, de Isaac, de todos los grandes. Este, and just living life, just enjoying as much as I can, drinking a lot of wine. Mm. And trying to get on that Peloton, you inspire me so much to work out. No sabes what say. Oh, yeah, pues ahí está. Oh you inspire me too because I'm trying to start like my own little business. Y digo, ¿cómo le hace esta chingona? O sea, se levanta muy temprano. She has a whole business to run. She has a whole morning show to run. And that in itself is so time consuming. Y todavía acting. And I can, I've never done or dwelled into that aspect. Pero I can only imagine being on set they can be long hours and it can be random hours. Yeah, it's, it's usually like 12 to 15, 16 hours. That's a meal. <laughs> yeah, and then that's just when you're acting because then when you got to, tenemos que preparar el personaje. Pero again, to me, it's like I breathe for that. That's the only reason why I do what I do because I absolutely love it. Wow, wow. Bueno, pues entonces... Fernanda, thank you so much for being in this space. I want you to let uh, everybody who's listening where they can follow you, where they can follow your brand, and then donde te pueden escuchar todas las mañanas. Thank you, Jose. I love you. Okay, so everybody, my name is Fernanda Kelly. You can find me at Fernanda Kelly with three Ys on Instagram, and you can find my clothing brand on Instagram too, arroba shop nitak. And you can listen to me every morning on Caleb on Levantate Show from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Muchísimas gracias, Fernanda Kelly. <laughs>